Okay, team, let's return back to allomorphs for a moment and apply it to orthographic mapping. And just to review what an allomorph is, an allomorph is a morpheme. And a morpheme, we said this before, is the smallest part of a word that carries meaning. Like, like in the word, let's say cats. Cats has uh, two morphemes, two parts that carry meaning. There's the base word that, that represents something. I guess that's a noun. <laughs> It's a four-legged noun with a tail, and that S represents more than one, right? So that basically, cats says trouble, but, but cats is made up of two morphemes. The base word means something. Uh, I should just call that a base word. And the suffix, uh, uh, the suffix there means something as well. Is that right? So, so a morpheme are the smallest parts of words that carry meaning. Now, an allomorph, we said, is a morpheme, like the morpheme ed, the inflectional suffix ed, that uh, means past tense. So these are all past tense verbs, right? So watched, wanted, and warned are all past tense, yes? An allomorph is a morpheme um, that is pronounced differently, though, depending on the word. For example, watched. Uh, it makes the t sound. Wanted, it has the id sound. Uh, warned, the ed has the d sound, right? So we have an allomorph, okay? Uh, a, uh, it's a type of morpheme, okay? Or an inflectional suffix, which is a morpheme. And it's pronounced differently each time. Okay, so now how does this uh, connect to orthographic mapping? Because we, we did this with uh, decoding. It's a, it's a morpheme that is pronounced differently. So as a de, if you're decoding a word, you have to know the different ways in which you pronounce this morpheme. But how does it do with encoding? Well, in encoding, you need to remember that this, this morpheme here, it is spelled the same way each time, but the spelling, the pronunciation varies. Okay, with that in mind, that the pronunciation of an allomorph might vary, even though the spelling stays the same, read the question. Uh, take uh, one minute, go. Unpause. I'm going to read it. In the back of your head, you're thinking about what we just talked about with allomorphs and ED. Which of the following principles is best illustrated by the words watched, wanted, and warned? Now, when you see words like watched, wanted, and warned automatically you're thinking of your good friend allomorphs right oh that those are words with allomorphs right okay now we get to the second piece um spelling is often the best predictor of the pronunciation of a suffix now with this allomorph okay with this suffix this inflectional suffix which happens to be an allomorph right Spelling is not a good predictor of its pronunciation. Would you agree? I mean, this is a suffix, which um, is the same in each word, but uh, has a totally different pronunciation. So this is not a true statement for a suffix like this, which uh, is known as an allomorph, which has the same spelling, but different pronunciations. Okay, how about this one right here? B. Open syllables are usually pronounced with a long vowel sound. Now that is a true statement, but we have to clarify what an open syllable is. And we're not quite there yet. We're going to do uh, that stuff in the next section, but let's just clarify an open syllable. And let's look at some words here that have open syllables. I'm going to write down here diner and tiger. Now, if we were to break up the syllables, you'd be like diner. Tiger. So I'm just going to break that down like this. Diner, tiger. Would you agree? And I'm just going to write down, this is vowel, consonant, vowel, I'm sorry, not vowel, consonant. It's consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel. This is called an open syllable. When the syllable cut is here and the vowel is left open, it's an open syllable. And what happens in both cases with a, a CV word, a word that has an open syllable is that vowel becomes long. 
So in both uh, diner and tiger, that first syllable is an open syllable and that I is long in both of these. So we say tie, di diner, long I, tiger, long I. Okay, now it is a true statement. Open syllables, lichen, diner, and tiger are usually pronounced with a long vowel sound. True statement. But hey, we are not dealing with words like watched, we are not dealing with tiger and diner. We're dealing with watched, wanted, and warned. If you were dealing with, let's say it said this, which of the following guest principles is best illustrated by the words uh, diner, <laughs> tiger? Uh, then, I, then yes, that would be B. But we don't have those words. So B is out. Team, are you getting something from this? I know I spend time on the wrong answers to point out things. You're to absorb that, and then we're going to do the right answer, okay? But let me just spend a little bit more time on the, the last wrong answer is D. The second letter of a consonant blend is usually, let me clear off some of this. The second letter of a consonant blend is usually pronounced as the onset of the following syllable. Let's think about that. Read that to yourself again. Pause me. So when I have a constant blend in the beginning of a word, like frog, right? When we do onset and rhyme, do we, do we make the, the onset and rhyme, do we, it says the second letter of the constant blend is usually pronounced as the onset. Is that a true statement? So for raw, that would be the onset, right? And then the rhyme would be the rest of it. Yes. So that is a true statement. If we if there's a blend in the beginning of a, a word like frog or stuck, right? Or or whatever other word blend, you include the the both um both parts of that cluster, right? The the first and the second sound. So that's a true statement. If we were dealing with um constant blends and words like blend, stuck, stuck, and frog. If those were the words, then D would be the answer, but we're not. So do you see, team, how, um, how A, B, and D were designed? They're not even false statements. D is correct for words like blend, stuck, frog. Uh, C is correct for, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, B is correct for words like uh, uh, tiger and diner. These are true statements that you need to know but we're not doing that. You see team, we're not doing, we are not doing blends and onsets and rhymes. We're not doing open syllables and tiger and diner. We're doing our friend, this is our friend. Good old allomorphs, right? And we know that the spelling of this type of allomorph is gonna be the same and the pronunciation varies. So C is the answer. The spelling of it, of a suffix like ed is often more reliable than its pronunciation. Team, that is like if you were doing allomorphs and this was your friend, this is literally like what your friend's known for. What's your friend known for? Oh, allomorph? <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you, allomorph, he spelt the same but pronounced differently for different words. That's his MO or her MO, right? You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes? You need to be able to spot your friend when they give it to you, even if they don't say Almorph. And then you need to understand why C matches with that concept or that friend, okay? All right, C is the answer. And another nice question, really nice question uh, from this test. You may want to take a look at it. Uh, answer is C. Let me get all exposure to a lot of different ideas here, okay? All right, we are building and we're gonna do some more building, but um, keep going, okay? Keep going, this is, we're gonna get into some juicy questions now. So keep going with me, okay? Let's go.